I'm Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group and executive director on the John Maxwell team. And I am your host for Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. Our show is called Crossing Bridges, where we talk about how we get from where we are, the obstacles we overcome, the challenges we meet to get to where we want to be. I am excited to introduce you to our guest today, Brooke Jakovich. And you know what? I had an opportunity to provide training to the team that Brooke led several years ago. And I knew then that she was a woman that I wanted to stay connected with. So let me introduce you to Brooke. And Brooke, so happy that you're here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Tell the audience, what is it that you do? We're gonna talk about some leadership topics, how we lead ourselves, the significance that we create when we lead others. But start with helping people understand where do you work? What do you do? What's your role? Sure, sure. Well, I'm very passionate about building businesses. Uh, I'm currently the senior vice president of operations for okay. a company called Total Vision. It's a new type of optometry consolidation group. We are uniting independent and successful independent optometry practices throughout California. And so I oversee all of the operations function and am involved in helping with our acquisitions and really welcoming new practices to our family. All right. Yeah. That sounds like a big job. Yes. So yeah. we're, we're, We've gone from zero locations in just a year's time to just under 30. That's a yeah. lot of activity going on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of activity. Yeah. When I first met you, and you're young now, and so it was several years ago, so you were even younger, and I was impressed with the respect that you had from people. So one of the things that I want to start talking about first is, Brooke, what did you do to earn respect? Because I checked you out. You were advancing. <laughs> she was moving up the ranks. So help the, I think the audience is going to want to understand, you know what, I want to move up the ranks. Mm -hmm. What did she do that I can also act on? Yeah, well, I think there are, uh, there are multiple things that contribute to advancement and, and quick advancement. Um, the one thing that I am very passionate about and I get excited about it is always learning something new. Mm -hmm. And so I think starting with that foundation of just being open to new um, le learnings or new opportunities or always raising my hand, which I think oftentimes it's, um, especially as a female, you wait until you're fully qualified to do it to yes. raise your hand. Yes. And so I think being comfortable with the uncomfortable and, and whether it be learning more in my existing position or raising my hand for the next opportunity, um, that was the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but then from there, I think it's as you're in those roles, uh, being prepared, okay. making sure you're prepared for the environment that you're walking into or the meeting, um, making sure that you practice and are uh, ready, uh, whether it's something you've done many times before or it's something new, because it's all about those crucial moments and crucial relationships. Exactly. So one thing yeah. I heard you say yeah. is that you didn't wait for somebody to tap you on the shoulder and say, Brooke, here's an opportunity. You raised your hand. And I think that's something that everybody can learn from. Mm -hmm. And you hit on something that I find interesting. Research shows mm -hmm. that men will apply for positions and they know they're not qualified for all of it. They see three things that they don't do mm -hmm. and eight that they do. So in their mind, they say, you know what, I've got these eight, I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. Women, on the mm -hmm. other hand, typically want to wait and get those other three done and have some more experience. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the opportunity passes by. Yeah. So a lesson that I got from you already, mm -hmm. and I think the audience got, is don't wait. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. Yeah. Now, you talked about preparation just now, too. Yes. Okay. When you and I were speaking before, you had some things that you shared because mm -hmm. you talked about relationships. Mm -hmm. And so help us understand a little bit more about what, what have you done to building relationships, connecting, that's the key. Mm -hmm. What have you done to, to build relationships? How, mm -hmm. bridges to cross, mm -hmm. steps you took? Well, I think in everything that we do, it's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And so as you go into meetings, whether you're making new relationships, that, that's where the, the preparation kind of translates as well. Mm -hmm. um, knowing your key stakeholders, mm. um, knowing who has the influence over your success or failure in your role, and that's always, it's not always someone that you report to. Mm. It can be multiple people in your environment. Like? 
um, like either um, key doctors. I'm in a, a multi-site doctor type of business. So key doctors that um, influence uh, the direction of the company or that location. Um, those that have influence over your success or the results that you deliver in your role. Mm -hmm. um, they could be uh, business owners, board members, um, so many different shapes, but understanding who your key st stakeholders are okay. uh, that can contribute to your success. So one of the things that mm -hmm. people take a look at is an organizational chart. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that it's good on paper, mm -hmm. but the person on the bottom, let's say, might be yeah. a person of influence. Exactly. So can you give us an idea about some steps that you've taken mm -hmm. to, like, what does that mean, build relationships? Does mm -hmm. it mean you go knock on their door and say, hey, I really want to get to know you better. Let's go have coffee. Well, help us mm -hmm. understand the person who's kind of shy. Maybe they're mm -hmm. not quite sure where to start. Yeah. How do they start on building those relationships? Well, I think it's understanding um, what success looks like for that person. So really understanding how you can deliver results because oftentimes when you're delivering results for that person, and it's not the results necessarily that you feel are important. They're the results that maybe that individual um, feels as important. So clearly defining what success looks like mm -hmm. and then um, by earning that or, or following up, doing what you say you're going to do. Follow through. Mm -hmm. okay. That earns your respect. And I think that's mm -hmm. what's so different with the workforce today. Mm -hmm. And whether it's um, at a senior level or entry level, um, leaders have to earn their respect every day. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> leaders have to earn their respect every day. And that translates into credibility, and that's how you build a relationship. Trust over time. And so I think when I, I think back to how I prepared for those crucial moments, mm -hmm. crucial conversations, it was practice, it was um, understanding your brand, it's how you dress, how you show up, the words you use, it's so many different factors. Okay. And I think that contributed to, to my success and advancement. Okay, so a couple other things to, yeah. to build on what you said. One was how you dress yeah. and how you show up. We actually had a show recently where we talked about that too mm -hmm. with the brand con image consultant Diana Jen Jennings. And we had a really good conversation about it because it's interesting how people show up. Mm -hmm. So you were intentional about mm -hmm. it. Give us an example about what that means, because it means physically yeah. and mentally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you, you mentioned and commented on my age. Yeah. And so I think understanding that age was a factor, it's a perception. And right. um, I believed over time as I demonstrated success or knowledge or many things that I would um, overcome the age factor. But I think by dressing professionally or knowing the audience that was going to be at the meeting, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and there are times where that is even dressing down. So when mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. going to talk to a new practice that joined our family or that was just recently acquired, I wasn't going to wear a jacket because, you know, then I'm perceived as corporate. Right. So it doesn't mean you're always having to, to overdress per se, mm -hmm. but I think how you dress is your brand. And so you have to know your audience and be able to understand that <laughs> when you are dressed appropriately, Appropriately, you're professional. Right. You actually have confidence. Right. And so that goes back to preparation. So okay. if you're prepared, if you've practiced, and then you also are dressing and feeling good, um, that helps with confidence. And confidence is really important mm -hmm. to to success as well. We don't want to follow anyone who's not confident. <laughs> exactly. So that is very true. Yeah. Um, thank you for elaborating on that. Another thing that you said was delivering on the results that the person wants. Mm -hmm. And so that means it's not about what we think is important. It's about what they feel mm -hmm. is important, what they know is important, what they expect. Mm -hmm. How did you go about determining that, Brooke? You know, it's not complicated. You just ask. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not complicated. Yeah. You just ask. Yeah, I think asking questions, seek to understand mm -hmm. versus assume, mm -hmm. that really helps. And that comes back to learning. Mm -hmm. And if you come from a place of understanding, trying to learn more, understanding what's important to them or mm -hmm. what they think is a successful result, no matter what the situation is, and that really helps you um, understand what, what, where they're coming from. And then they respect you more too. Did yeah. you, ex yeah, do you experience that? Because yeah. it seems like when we ask people what they want, 
then we're showing that we yeah. care about them and it's not just about us, it's about them. Yeah. And that immediately helps build the relationship, exactly. doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Thank you. You have to listen afterwards, but yes. <laughs> Listening, and it is easier said than it done. It takes I'm, energy, yeah. right? I'm guilty of it because I get excited. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, but um, I have had to work hard to learn and to listen more. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know what? Thank you for saying that. Oh. That's something that we all have to work on yeah. doing is listening. I'm going to switch gears okay. because, Brooke, what I discovered by following you on Instagram, <laughs> is that you have a little one now. Yes. Exactly. So that yep. happened since I had seen you. And yes. so you have a toddler. So I want to talk about motherhood. My two sons are full-on adults. Yep. So it has been several years since I was a mom of toddlers. Mm -hmm. And I remember the juggling that went on with sometime I traveled and you know I had the work that I had to bring home and mm -hmm. I just remember all that and so I know that you were quick to say hey Michelle I don't have this all figured out I'm not perfect at it mm -hmm. and but you're getting it done mm -hmm. and so some of the people out there watching are probably moms of little ones or teenagers the point is how are you managing to get it done? Is there such a thing as work-life balance? Or what are you doing? Share some of the tips that you discovered, Brooke. That, and I know you're yeah. crossing that bridge. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a bridge yeah. that you're crossing now. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's definitely a push and pull. Oh. It's, <laughs> I would be lying if I said I'd mastered it. Right. Um, but I do think by becoming a mom, it actually helped me become a better leader. My natural tendency is to work harder. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it doesn't always, working harder doesn't always get you better results. Not usually. Exactly. It makes so, you more tired. You know, I've had to work hard and I still have to battle it when I feel like things aren't going well or where I want to be or I'm not hitting the milestones where I expect to be at. I tend to naturally want to work harder. And so um, by, and, and I think for me, being a mom has helped that because I've realized that I want to be home. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. I want to participate in in my little one's growth. I mean, he's three and he needs me. And what's his name? Reese. Reese. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> yep. So um, with all of that, I I think by understanding that my natural tendency is to work harder, mm -hmm. I've actually had to intentionally s take a step back at times and figure out, well, how do I do this in a smarter way? Mm -hmm. And how do I leverage the team members that I have, whether it be you know individual people that report to me or, or those within the organization to accomplish more? And so <laughs> I kind of call that the X factor. It's how do you, you achieve more um, by, by letting others do it? Mm. And probably the hardest part about that is letting them make their own mistakes. Oh, yeah. while trusting them yeah. and empowering them. Exactly. It's more than just empowerment. It's more than just giving them a project. Right. It's really about building people around you that prop you up in areas that you don't have the knowledge or skills, but then allowing them the opportunity um, with the right support and direction to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that has been learned mm -hmm. and I get better at it over time. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, the, the life event of becoming a mom has helped with that. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I heard you say that you ask yourself a question. Mm -hmm. How can I leverage this differently? Mm -hmm. I love that because instead of being frustrated and thinking about all the things that weren't happening or getting mm -hmm. completed, it sounds like you take a step back mm -hmm. and then you ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. At what point do you do that? Do you, do you intentionally think about it at the end of the day, at the end of the week? Mm -hmm. What kind of process are you mm -hmm. going through to you know, be mm -hmm. able to stop and yeah. then acknowledge it? Um, I'd like to say it's a, it's a, a routine or a rhythm. Um, it's not quite like that for me. I think it's when I feel like um, that pendulum is swinging too far. Okay. I actually have to catch myself. Okay. Um, and because it's not healthy when you're when you're pushing yourself to the limit both at the office and then trying to be everything at home mm -hmm. at the same time, it it doesn't work. Something's got to give. And so I think being able to better recognize that sooner or earlier on, it's a learned experience. Okay. Um, and then also building it into your your routine. Mm -hmm whether it be um, having um, team meetings where mm -hmm. you let others take charge, 
Um, looking for mm -hmm. uh, performers within the organization that you think with the right coaching, you could actually, it may take more time up front, but you can actually gain more from it in the long run. And then not being afraid to hire people with expertise or skills that you don't have mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and letting them take it. And I think, again, my natural tendency is to hold on or to do it myself. And I think it's been a great learning experience to give it away, you know, give, give both the credit away, but then give the project away. And it always comes back tenfold. That's such a great quality of leadership. You're not trying to do everything. Yeah. It sounds like you know you don't have all the answers, and none of us have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like you have an open mind and an open heart, you know, mm -hmm. and the thing is lead from the heart, right? Yeah. Where you really are paying attention to the talents that people mm -hmm. have. It sounds like you're really observing their mm -hmm. talents and you're observing their strengths and mm -hmm. you're helping to build on their strengths. Yeah. And then let's talk a little bit more about delegation because you said, you know, how can I leverage this, identify mm -hmm. what kind of strengths other people have mm -hmm. and delegate. And the truth is when we delegate what you said, we get to let it go. Mm -hmm. And we get to help people learn and, mm -hmm. and excel in something that mm -hmm. they might have an interest in, but maybe they don't have the courage or, or mm -hmm. the temerity to raise their hand. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you really help them identify what they could do and do an even better job at it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about that. What benefits have you seen, if you can think mm -hmm. of an example, where you delegated and it was a success? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's not necessarily just delegation. It's trying to figure out is there someone else that could actually handle this mm -hmm. because at some point you don't have enough hours personally in the day right and so instead of the response being let me take care of that or let me do it it's asking the question back to people on your team or people within your organization of is there anyone else you know of that could actually assist Mm -hmm. you know, this person with the challenge that they're having. There's that ask mm -hmm. again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> asking questions. Right. And, and then listening to the response. Right. Um, because when you ask your team or individuals more questions, you start to see how they think about mm -hmm. the situation. Mm -hmm. And it's actually impressive. Um, so one of the examples I had is uh, I love creating leadership team meetings of all the different practice leaders at our sites. And I've seen in the past where I've given another um, leader at the organization the opportunity to lead a course or a topic. And they take the topic and they run with it. Right. And to see what they were able to do, and maybe there's some back and forth discussion on what we want to accomplish with the topic and what we want the, the leaders within the room to, to take away. Mm -hmm. But then letting that person actually build it mm -hmm. and present it, it's, it's exciting when you see them do a better job than what you could do yourself. That is exciting. That's yeah. what you call a confident leader, too. Yeah, yeah helping other people grow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, good job. See, I told you I wanted to stay connected <laughs> with you. So I'm going to switch gears again. So another okay. bridge, right? Another yeah. bridge to cross. Recently, you changed positions from when you and I first met. Yes. Now, you were very successful there, as we said. Mm -hmm. And some people are comfortable and so they already know the people, they already know the environment, they know all the ins and outs, and mm -hmm. so it feels very comfortable. And so, but deep inside, they have a yearning to go do something else, mm -hmm. but they stay. What made you decide to cross that bridge mm -hmm. so that you could go get yet another experience? Mm -hmm. Well, my last organization, I had spent 10 years there. Okay. Uh, lots of learning, lots of growth. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was more of a feeling where I felt like it was time for my next okay. um, my next opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference was trying to identify that feeling before you're at the end of the road. Mm. Um, because I was still <laughs> continuing to give, and there, there was still a lot of growth. Um, and development opportunities, but I did feel like I was coming to that point in time mm. where it was, um, you know, I was looking for the next challenge or the next company to build. Okay, because you said you like building businesses. I am passionate about that, <laughs> yes, yes. And so I think it's, um, you know, not coming to a point where you're now desperate to make the move. Uh, it afforded me the time to what I like to call create my next opportunity. I like that versus just jumping to other opportunities that you could actually be really good at. And when we create our own opportunities, when we create um, what is the right fit and we evaluate the factors that are most important to us, mm -hmm. then we have the highest chance of success in, in that next, next, you know, 
position. Next step. Yeah. To, for the bridge to cross. So yeah. what were some of your steps? You mentioned some before me. You said you had a list of must-haves. Yeah. I like that. Must-haves. Yeah. Share that. I bet there's some people that are yeah. watching and listening to us yeah. that, that want to do the same thing. And again, trying to figure out how to get started. Yeah. Well, I think it's when you're when you're just looking at um, financial reasons or position, title, just those types of surface opportunities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or what you could actually be successful at. If you if you could be successful in that opportunity, do, are you going to be happy Ooh. in that in that okay. position? So, okay. for me, it started with a list of mm -hmm. what are my non-negotiables, what okay. are my must-haves. Um, what are the things based on where I'm at in my life? And that comes back to motherhood, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was a new mom. And so what are the things that I wanted to change about my my daily work schedule? Okay. Like how often do I want to, did I want to be on the road right. or travel? Um, was it airplane travel or road travel? Right. Um, what do what did I want my daily, weekly, monthly schedule to be like? You had to really know yourself. Yeah. And you have to debate it. You have to ask yourself honestly, like, mm -hmm. is that right for, for me with where I'm at in life? Can I also do this and have that? Mm. And so there's a trade off. How'd you come up to how'd you come up with that then? Because you you said pay one thing you mentioned yeah. too was don't settle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think by getting really clear on what I was looking for, what was most important to me in my role um, or next opportunity, mm -hmm. um, that was the foundation. And then I think what solidified it for me is talking to others. Okay. So talking to my family, my friends, as I was able to outwardly project um, what I was looking for, I got better at understanding really mm. what I what I felt. Oh, so just communicating yeah. it, talking out loud. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then I was able to take that same message and be clear when I was talking to others. Mm. Um, because to create an opportunity, you actually have to talk to key influencers mm -hmm. in, in the market, mm -hmm. right? And so by doing that, starting with my family and friends and then talking to colleagues, um, other relationships that I had built up in um, the community, attending breakfasts or lunches or coffee opportunities. Right. By sharing that message and having such clarity on what the what I was looking for, it helped something to find me. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, because what I heard you say too was you, you expand, you used your you used your network. Yeah, and you didn't just network. You yeah. had clear conversations. Yeah. So you might network, but then you had clear conversations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Brooke, wow, you have demonstrated to us examples of crossing bridges in mm -hmm. leadership, leading others, leading yourself and leading your family. Because by the way, you do also have a husband. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's not leave him out. Yes, I couldn't do all this without him. There you that's go, that's what sure. I'm saying. See, we, don't, we always need help. Yeah. What's your next bridge to cross? Yeah, ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, I think we're, um, with what I'm doing and leading the organization I'm at today, mm -hmm. um, so much of what I view as my purpose is to improve the lives of all the team members that okay. join our organization. So I'm really focused on that. And where can we mm -hmm. find you? So we need website, and you have, I think, multiple locations. Yes. So before you go, we have yep. to tell people where they can find sure. Total Vision. Yep. Uh, so it's totalvisionllc.com. You can find us on the web. Um, we are building our connected site as we integrate all of our unique, successful, independent practices. Um, but feel free to message me on LinkedIn, Brooke Jakovich. And I'm happy to introduce you to an optometrist. If you need glasses, we can help you out with that. She points to me. <laughs> um, and, and happy to help anyone on their journey to finding their next opportunity. And, okay. and spell your last name. Uh, J-A-K-O-V-I-C-H. Okay, Brooke. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you for tuning in to with us to learn more about Crossing Bridges and leadership, personal leadership, and best to you. Until next time, we'll see you on Women Lead TV.